Hey people, it's Quetzal coming at you from underneath my blanket, and if you don't believe me, here's a selfie. If anyone can agree on anything, it's that this year's Nintendo Switch lineup is the best we've seen in a while. Games like Breath of the Wild 2, Splatoon 3, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, a new Pokemon game, or if your name happens to be Melody, then Klonoa is also up there. I guess. But I want to talk about a game that kind of flew under the radar for a lot of people, including myself. And if you read the title, then you already know that I'm talking about my boy Kirby. I knew this game existed, but I never realized it had actually released, mainly because Nintendo didn't shove it in your face like they would with a new Mario game. Which is a shame, because this new Kirby game might be the best one yet. Kirby in the Forgotten Land takes Kirby from the traditional 2D platformer to a full-blown 3D platformer that feels incredibly natural, which is super impressive because this is technically Kirby's first time in 3D. I got a lot to go over, so to keep me on track, I'm gonna break this review into categories. Each category can receive up to 10 points, and there are 5 of them in total. And the categories are as follows, starting with gameplay, and then story, aesthetics, difficulty curve, and finally value. And finally, as a disclaimer, this is all my opinion, so if you disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments section. So without any further delay, let's get started. Gameplay is the first category, and one that this game excels at. As I said before, the developers of Kirby's New Adventures managed to take a game that was almost strictly a 2D platformer and turned it into a pretty damn good 3D platformer. It almost feels as if this was where Kirby was always meant to be. One of the core mechanics of any Kirby game is his ability to inhale an enemy and copy their abilities. An example would be inhaling a Sir Kibble to become a Cutter Kirby, or inhaling a Sword Knight to become Sword Kirby. I love Kirby's copy abilities, which is why it's simultaneously Simultaneously, my favorite and most disappointing part of this game. My biggest complaint has to be that the transition to 3D kind of shafted all of the copy abilities out of a proper moveset, which ultimately isn't even that big a deal because you can actually upgrade copy abilities to make them even better. You can do this by finding blueprints and taking them to the blacksmith in order to upgrade your abilities. This gives the original abilities much more powerful variants. An example of this is upgrading the hammer ability into the toy hammer ability, which is literally just the hammer ability but better. But that's enough about abilities, let's shift the conversation over to stages. If memory serves me correctly, I believe each world has about five stages. And every stage has about four or five side missions that you can do in order to get more Waddle Dees to bring Waddle Dee Town back to its former glory. Also scattered throughout the overworld is a bunch of challenge stages that you can do in order to obtain rare stones, which are required to upgrade your abilities. Challenge stages are designed around specific abilities in order to test your proficiency with them. Your the only goal in the challenge stage is actually just to make it to the end and obtain the rare stone, but there are side objectives for you to do if you choose. Another mechanic you're going to use a lot in this game is Mouthful Mode. It's a special mechanic exclusively for this game, in which Kirby, believe it or not, inhales large objects. You know, large objects, like scaffolding and a, a really old, rusty car. I. I kind of hope Kirby's up to date on his tetanus shots, because uh, God knows I'm not. Now again, I'm going to say this is my opinion, but I think that the gameplay in this game justifies a perfect score of 10 points. I just can't get over how naturally it feels for Kirby to be in 3D, and it just works so well. Anyway, now we're on to story, which is arguably probably the weakest case you can make for playing this game. Don't get me wrong, there is a story, and it's actually not that bad. It's just getting to the story, you have to pretty much beat the whole damn game. And the way this game starts off is incredibly fucking simple. It literally just starts, Kirby gets sucked into a hole, and then... Bam, you're in the Forgotten Land. Bam, you walk into Waddle Dee Town. Bam, there's a talking chinchilla that can float because fuck gravity and fuck you. I'm sorry, Daddy YouTube, I'm at my curse limit for the day. But in all seriousness, that's really all there is to talk about in terms of story. It's just that simple. It's simpler than Kirby's design. It's just, you know, there. Don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna give it like a 6.5, because what's there is really good. It's just...
it, it takes a long time to get the ball rolling. So, yeah, their their story. Next category. Fuck it. Now we're on to the good stuff. Aesthetics is basically going to be combining both visual and audio together because I really feel like I don't have enough to talk about if I separate them. So, yeah, here you go. This is still going to be my personal favorite category, by the way, because I ain't gonna lie, the music in this game is fucking banging. I mean, just take a second of your day to listen to this. Tell me it isn't good. Honestly, the music in most Kirby games is pretty good, and this game is definitely no exception here. But that's not even getting into the visuals yet. And if I'm being honest in terms of visuals, this is a very good reason why art direction is so important in video games. Because the Switch is not the most powerful console, which means this game is not going to have a shitload of polygons. It is going to have good art, which makes up for the lack of polygons. And if you don't believe me when I say this, you can look at games like Breath of the Wild and Xenoblade 2 because they both look really fucking good, considering they are on a Nintendo Switch. Which again, for probably third time this video, the Nintendo Switch is very underwhelming in terms of processing power. I'm gonna stop myself before I end up rambling, and I'm gonna talk about the stages now, more specifically their designs. And I gotta say, the guy who designed these stages needs a fucking raise. Like, holy crap. Have you seen the haunted house stage? That is my favorite one in the entire game, period. It is so good looking, and I love it. I, I love it to death. That's not also to mention that the spectacle of a lot of the boss battles. One of my favorites definitely had to be the Circus Furry. The Ice World was also one of my favorite areas in general, just because it was really cool. Uh, on top of the Circus area, which was also very cool. So I don't really care how you try to slice it, D Kirby's aesthetic is just a 10. Yeah. And if you choose to disagree with me, that's fine, because you can just eat my shoelaces. I don't care. Alright, next category. This discussion is over. Alright, so our next category is actually Difficulty Curve. Now you're probably thinking, but Quetzal, what the fuck? This, the, what, no other reviewer does Difficulty Curve? That, that, that's so random, why did you choose that? And it's like, I'm gonna be honest with you, I kind of couldn't think of anything to put here, so uh, there it is. I was kind of thinking I could use it as a tool to rank something between, I don't know, Cooking Mama and fucking Dark Souls. And I gotta be honest here, Kirby in the Forgotten Land kind of ranks a lot closer to Dark Souls, which surprised me. Now I'm not gonna pretend that it's stupid hard, but it's definitely a lot harder than you would think it is. However, unlike Dark Souls, the difficulty actually adds to the game and makes it a lot more fun. Allow me to explain myself, Dark Souls is more of a game that you play to challenge yourself, whereas Kirby the difficulty is at a point where it's still fun to play, so it actually adds to the experience, whereas Dark Souls, you're still playing the game for fun, but ultimately you're still kind of just wishing you were dead the whole time. So in my humble opinion, I think the difficulty curve for this game earns it a solid 9 points in this category. Finally, we are brought to our final category, value. So, is this game actually worth about $64? Probably not. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's a fantastic game, but it just doesn't have the content that can justify the price point. To be honest, the only way I'm really going to be able to justify buying this game is if, one, you're a completionist, two, you are a speedrunner and you're gonna spend like 70 hours finding the most optimal route, or three, you are like me and just have zero time to do anything, so you just take forever to get through the game. While it is your money and you are free to waste it as you please, I would honestly recommend just waiting for a sale for this game because it's honestly worth the sale price, but not really $60. So for me, Kirby earns a solid 4 points for value. And there you have it, Kirby has earned a 39.5 out of a possible 50 points. And you know what, I think I'm just gonna round it up to 40 because I like the game. Which means it was really only 10 points off from being absolutely perfect. And also, the game gets my signature, uh, 
thing of approval. Uh, there you go. Uh, I'll probably just put something in MS Paint or something. Hopefully, if you get this game, you actually enjoy it as much as I did, because I'm gonna be honest, I do genuinely think this is one of the best Kirby games that we'll probably ever get. And honestly, looking back, it was a hell of an adventure. I definitely enjoyed myself, and I didn't even touch on the boss rush mode. Thinking back to all the time I've spent with Kirby, he really was a staple of my childhood, and I was definitely excited to see that he got a new game. It was just a shame that I never really realized it came out until now. Overall, I really can't sing this game's praises enough. I think the only problem is really the price point, but you know, Papa Nintendo gotta make that dough. Not gonna lie, I kinda just remembered. The opening cutscene for this game, for some reason, made my Switch achieve sentience only to ask for death, which I kind of ignored, but you know, hey. Anyway, thank you so much for sticking it out to the end of the video, but I kinda gotta go now, so I guess I'll uh, catch you later. Peace.